We've got really good preliminary data to suggest that rising levels of testosterone in young male traders, when they're on a winning streak, are actually shifting their risk preferences and causing them um, to take too much risk. The title of the book is The Hour Between Dog and Wolf. It's an old French expression going back to the Middle Ages, but in fact it dates back further than that to about 200 AD in Latin. It refers to the time of day, twilight, when you can't really tell whether an animal coming out of the woods is either a dog or a wolf, but it also refers to the moment of transformation when a dog, when people during the Middle Ages thought you could actually transform from one animal into another, like a tame dog into a wild wolf. In our research here in Cambridge and down in the city of London, we're looking at the way the body, and particularly chemicals and electrical pathways of the body, can transform risk takers and change their behavior. So the title is to, refers to that process of transformation. I used to be a trader. I ran, uh, traded derivatives for Goldman Sachs and then ran derivative trading desk for Deutsche Bank on Wall Street for about 13 years. And during that period, I f observed in myself or felt in myself um, this change taking place when I was making above average profits or above average losses. And I noticed it amongst my fellow traders as well. It's something I thought that economics had not focused on. There's a tendency in economics to think that financial risk taking is a purely cognitive activity. They used to think that cognitive activity was purely rational. Behavioral economics came along and said that no, it's more quirky than that. It's not necessarily irrational, but it doesn't operate according to the model of, of rational choice. What none of them had done, as far as I'm concerned, is actually observe what was happening to traders when they were caught up in a winning streak or a bubble, or on the other hand, a losing streak and a crash. Because it's a fundamental piece of scientific data that's been overlooked that traders change. You feel this narcotic effect when you're making a lot of money and expecting a large bonus. And that shifts your preference for risk. You start taking much more risk with um, worsening risk reward trade-offs and you eventually blow up. So we've been trying to identify the molecules and the nervous pathways in the body that contribute to this kind of shift, well I would call it a transformation, but in more technical terms, um, that would account for these shifts in risk preferences, which we think destabilize the financial markets. We were initially looking for what might be called the molecule of irrational exuberance, the chemical in our body that causes traders during a bubble or a winning streak to take too much risk. Um, we are applying a model from animal behavior called the winner effect, in which an animal that has won a competition is more likely to win the next round of competition. Um, it's a very robust statistical finding. They wondered what mechanism was driving it. When they looked into it, they found that rising levels of testosterone were causing the animal to um, uh, take more risks, to become more confident. It also increased their hemoglobin and thus their blood's capacity to carry oxygen. So we just applied that to the financial markets very mechanically. Um, so it was, a, it was already a, a beautiful model, a robust model. And what we found was very good preliminary evidence, A, that the winner effect does exist in humans as well. In fact, they've, they've observed it in athletes, so we know it exists in humans. We observed it in, in traders. Um, and we found that it was, in fact, shifting their risk preferences. I think a more interesting finding was um, the research we've done into the stress response in uh, the financial world. When the volatility of the market picks up, when traders are losing money, when the volatility of their P&L, that's their profits and loss, increases, um, the stress response in their body um, kicks in. And that has an incredibly powerful effect both on their body and their brain. Uh, we think that it causes risk preferences to shift in the other direction, so that it causes the financial community to become risk averse, just when you don't want it to, that is during a crash. So we think that these two molecules, or these two, I wouldn't focus on just two chemicals because when we talk about testosterone, it's really just one molecule in a body-wide preparation for competition. When we talk about the stress response, we could talk about adrenaline and cortisol, which is a steroid hormone, um, but they're really just two players in this body-wide preparation for an emergency. Um, so we think that these two physiological reactions to above average opportunity or threat are shifting risk preferences and not causing financial market instability so much as exaggerating it. 
We don't think testosterone, for example, causes a bull market. Lower interest rates do, new markets, technological breakthroughs, uh, regulatory changes. But there's a big difference between a bull market and a bubble. And we think once a bull market gets going, the physiology is strong enough to morph it into a bubble. Same with a bear market, that the physiology is strong enough to morph a bear market into a crash. And the danger there is that this physiological reaction is so strong that the financial community might actually become price insensitive, which means that it's not sensitive to interest rates anymore. And that may help account for the fact that central banks have had a very checkered uh, record at stopping a bubble with, ri with raising, by raising interest rates or curing a crash by lowering them to zero. Keynes really understood that there was something um, uh, beyond rationality at work, um, what he called a, a spontaneous urge to action rather than inaction, animal spirits. So in a sense, we're just working on what Keynes was working on, only he didn't have much biology under his belt and he didn't really know the, the biology that was driving animal spirits. The body has been beautifully constructed to optimize our performance in risk taking. It gives us fast reactions. Reactions ha occur a lot faster than consciousness can keep up with. It provides us with gut feelings, which they found are not only real physiological entities, but are required for efficient decision making. I think it's really important in this research to realize that we're dealing with the wrong model of how the body and brain cooperate. To me, it was a light bulb moment when I came back to Cambridge and started this research to realize that economics and fu academic finance, even psychology perhaps, and even is really fundamentally influenced by a platonic notion of a mind-body split. Now that sounds like a really philosophical notion that wouldn't really impact concrete research, but it has a really profound impact on the way we see body and brain. I think a lot of us are think that our brains can operate independently of our bodies. But we didn't evolve that way. Body and brain evolved together. They work together. When we take risks, body and brain are collaborating as a sync, functioning as a single unit. So in answer to your question, usually our body and brain are beautifully uh, synchronized to optimize our risk taking. And the more we've looked into the, the biology of risk taking, the more we realize that what we're uncovering is just a universal biology of risk taking shared by athletes, by soldiers, by politicians, and by traders. And normally, as I say, that, that biology of risk taking works very, very well. It's just occasionally under situations of extraordinary opportunity or threat, the biology can overwhelm us and shift our risk preferences a bit too much.